Hi there, Daniel Daly here, Daniel Thomas Sandra Daly. This is a review, Alpine Comics review, for Greenland's Rebirth Special number one. Now, from DC Comics. They're the two new lands, two new Greenlands, Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz. Now, DC re started its rebirth just recently, just these last few months, and it's a re rebooting of the DC Universe. Now, there's also other Green Lanterns comics in the rebirth, Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns, and Hal's, Hal's in this, this issue, which is the rebirth special, and he beats the Green Lanterns, and he's dealing with the Green Lantern core on the other side of the universe, apparently, on the other side of the galaxy. And, uh, this is, by the looks of it, introducing two people who are sort of brand new to being Green Lanterns for Sector 2814 Earth, the Earth, Earth Sector. Brand new Green Lanterns. So, it's not Green Lantern, it's Green Lanterns, with an S at the end. And I think it's a debut Green Lanterns title from DC. They haven't had Green Lanterns before. They've had Green Lantern and Green Lantern Corps, but not Green Lanterns before. So it's a debut of Green Lanterns because there's more than one. Two of them. Now, um, Green Lantern Corps is standard, Green Lantern's a standard sort of, a standard sort of superhero in the uh, DC universe. It's part of Justice League from time to time. And these fellows, um, they're going to be involved with Justice League from what Hal Jordan is saying in the issue. And, uh, and uh, they're basically there to protect the Earth and do what superheroes do. There's a bit of bit of the artwork. The, the story is written by Johns, it's probably Jeff Johns, who's now the president of DC for the most part, or DC Entertainment. Is it Jeff Johns? It's um, written by Jeff Johns and Sam Humphreys and Ethan Van Skyver and Ed Benners. Now the art is, uh, yeah, it's generally of a DC sort of standard stuff. It's quite good. This artwork, by the looks of it, it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 crisp, it's detailed, it's pretty good stuff. It's up to a, they're still progressing with the artwork as they do from generation to generation, and this artwork is of a little bit, little bit of a higher standard than '90s naughty sort of artwork. Are oh, similar to a lot of it, but um, they're still still improving gradually, which DC do with their artwork. The story of this story, well, it introduced them to a fair degree. They had a challenge fighting a drone manhunter, which Hal Jordan provided them as a challenge, and they failed. Ha <laughs> ha. Surprise, surprise. But um, they have to work together as a team to be the Green Lanterns of Earth. They were, um, they had a power battery which charges their Green Lantern ring. Uh, they, they had one of those, but uh, Hal Jordan's decided that it'll merge, merge that Merge that lantern, those power batteries, into one power battery, so they have to both use it at the same time to activate the green lantern, to, to, to charge their batteries. So they're going to be a team effort. This is obviously a team book of Simon Baz and Jessica Cruz, the new green lanterns. Their costumes are pretty spiffy, as you can see. Pretty good stuff. Now, the story was, um... It wasn't a huge amount of action in there, or... A uh, huge amount of interest. I didn't have, have a huge interest in the story. It read okay. It's a good enough standalone comic for a bit of a read, but it's it's not. Um, I like to say it's not Shakespeare. This is this is no no great dialogue on life or anything like that. It's just a. It's not flim flam. It's not stupid stuff. But um, it's a pretty basic story. Just it's really just what it is. An introductory story to the Greenlands. It's just setting the scene for what's to follow. More heroics from the Green Lantern Corps. Um, Simon Baz looks like an interesting enough fellow. Jessica Cruz looks okay. They'll probably have their idiosyncrasies developed by the authors as time goes by. Jeff Johns is a pretty good writer by the looks of it. It's solid storytelling. Uh, they face a friend who's, who's coming to fight them. The Red Lantern Corps with Atrocitus and all that. Because there's a whole stack of different coloured green coloured Lantern Corps now. So it's going to be Red Dawn, how original, hey, you know, for, for humanity. So they're going to confront the Red Lanterns soon enough. The Ragents, I think they're called, also. So they focus on Rage the Red Lanterns. So that's going to be the first adventure in Green Lanterns number one, which is the following issue coming up uh, 
in the next month's issue. So it's a, it's an introductory tale. It, it read okay. The artwork is quite nice. It's, it's nice pictures. It's not nice scenery and stuff. It's an introductory tale. It wasn't heavy reading. It's 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 standard sort of superhero comic. Nothing sure, but it wasn't boring. I wouldn't have called this one a boring issue, but it didn't really grab me as as um, a lot of recent comics from DC have grabbed me. It didn't grab uh, you know a, a tale which is unforgettable. It's standard sort of comic. Is it a decent investment item? Yeah, it's uh, Green Lantern's Rebirth Special Number One is possibly quite a reasonable reasonable investment item actually in the long term. Green Lantern number one, so you should are okay as a number as, a, as an investment. And this comic, Green Lantern's Rebirth Special Number One, because it's the first Green Lanterns, it's potentially quite a decent investment over in the short term possibly as well. But in the long term, it's it'll it'll hold its own quite quite okay. I would imagine normally, but it's probably a reasonable return. Um, the story overall, the, the art is good. The story's okay. It's nothing great. Some people might like it a bit, but I don't expect anyone to be writing home terribly much about Green Man's number one. Uh, it's the standard sort of interaction of superheroes and the, the whinging and complaining against each other, which is what they always do in comics. Um, I don't think I can really score more than about a 6 out of 10, actually. I don't think I can quite get a, get a 7, because I don't think it's really solid enough as an entertaining story to, to grant a 7. Because it's not terribly much to the story. It's it's, it's introductory, but there's not much more than that. Um, there's no plot being unravelled in any major way. Just the flash of the end with the Red Lanterns. So it's it's um it's pretty basic stuff. So I can only really give it a six out of ten, maybe a seven out of ten on a good day. Because some people might enjoy reading it, but it's it's better than a five because it's it's a solid enough read, and you you probably won't be bored with it. But um, there's nothing terribly spectacular about Greenland's Rebirth number one. So in the end, I'd probably give it about a 6 out of 10. It's an okay comic. It's probably a good investment. Should you get it? If you like, yeah, it, it has potential. It's probably going to read okay as a series. And I'm pretty sure it's going to improve. So this is Alpine Comics Reviews of Greenland's Rebirth special number one. It's probably worth getting and collecting if you're into sort of superhero comics. This one's okay. But... It, certainly doesn't reinvent the wheel it's just a standard sort of superhero comic greenland's rebirth number one